What is the worst thing you've overheard while pretending to be asleep? Hey everyone, the narrator for Mainly Fact has to take a break for a week or two, so I'm stepping in as the voice from Internet Recap to be the guest narrator on this channel until he returns. This way we can still bring you stories in the meantime. Thanks for your understanding, and with that being said, Story 1. I was at my boyfriend's apartment staying over. His roommate also happened to have some friends who were dating there as well. I was in my boyfriend's room and they were sleeping in the living room. They were definitely boning. Weirdest thing of it all were these little banging sounds, like someone was hitting the wall. The whole time I had to pee like a racehorse, but getting to the bathroom involved walking by the living room and I did not want to risk it. When we woke up the next morning, someone had ripped a chunk out of one of the curtains and the TV remote was snapped in half. To this day, I don't want to know what was going on in there. It's honestly crazy to think about what was going on in that living room. I mean, I get it, people have needs and desires, but it's definitely not cool to be so loud and destructive in someone else's home. It must have been a really uncomfortable situation to be in. And the fact that they still don't know what was going on in that living room is even more unsettling. Let's just hope they don't have to deal with that kind of behavior again in the future. Story 2. My mom trying to calm my dad down out of a sepacoodle fit. My brother and I had been really bad that day, and when he grounded us, we both told him that we hated him and wanted him to go away. He didn't do anything wrong. My brother and I were just a couple of immature little brats. He, I'm pretty sure blackout drunk at this point, which I had never seen him, still haven't saw since then, walked into our room that night, and I pretended to fall asleep. Then he just started these deep, haunting sobs that I'll probably never forget. He stumbled outside, and we could hear him begging to my mom to let him end his life, and sobbing, All I've ever wanted in my entire life was to be a better dad than mine. I was only 11 or so, but it really destroyed my heart. I think that's the time I learned that emotional pain can actually physically hurt. I was hunched over in my bed, bawling my eyes out and on the verge of throwing up. I also felt like a jerk for crying over what we said. My brother was thankfully able to sleep through it all. I think about that once every two weeks or so, and I always message him to tell him I love him when I do. I hope he forgot about it, but being a dad myself now, I don't think it's something you totally forget. It might not hurt like it did in the moment, but I don't think you forget. Like most heartbreaking things, I guess. Oh, reading this story was like a punch in the gut for me. It's heart-wrenching to hear about the pain that this family went through, especially at such a young age. I can't imagine what it must have been like to witness a parent in such a vulnerable state, begging for release from their emotional pain. It's incredibly brave of the person to share this story, as it's not an easy thing to do. But it's important to remember that emotional pain can be just as real and intense as physical pain, and that it's something that can stay with a person for a long time. It's also a reminder to be kind to those we love, even when we're feeling frustrated or angry. You never know what someone else might be going through, and sometimes the things we say can have a profound impact on the people around us. Story 3. Sleeping over at a friend's house when I was 14, all of us on the floor in the living room. Couldn't sleep. Two of my friends, guy and girl, directly next to me, start doing freaky things to each other. I was extremely shy and a couple of years younger than them, so I stayed quiet and hoped they'd stop. Had to listen to them for an hour while she made weird moaning, squeaking noises, and he was singing in a weird, slightly whispery, singy voice, Matchbox 20 songs to her while he did whatever he was doing. That was the last time I slept over at a friend's house. Oh man, it's understandable why you wouldn't want to sleep over at a friend's house again after experiencing that. It's important to respect other people's privacy and boundaries, especially in shared spaces like a living room. It's a shame that your friends didn't consider how their actions might make others feel. It's always a good idea to speak up and communicate your discomfort in situations like this, but it can be tough when you're feeling shy or intimidated. Story 4. In college, woke up to roommate's bed creaking. I shoot up to see what the heck is going on. There, I see some woman on her back with her legs full spread eagle and my roommate just piled driving it like it was his last day on earth. Like a good bro, I quickly lie back down and pretend to be asleep. Her, in between gasps of air, is your roommate awake? Him, nah, he sleeps through anything. Cut to next morning, I casually get up and turn on my PlayStation 2 and start playing some random game. 
Roommates Fling gets up and casually comes over and sits next to me. Her. Good morning, my name. Me. Good morning, her name. Her. Did you sleep good last night? Me. Yeah, I can sleep through anything. As the last word left my mouth, I immediately realized I blew it. She began a huge flurry of slaps at my roommate while cursing at him. He didn't care because he was too busy laughing the whole time. Edit, this is my first major comment. Thanks for all the updates and awards. I'm glad I could make so many people laugh. And just to clarify for anyone asking, I did not realize who she was in the .05 seconds when I shot up in a haze, so to me, she was some random woman until the morning when I was able to realize who it was. She didn't really hit him hard, but it was a flurry of frustrated slaps. No real harm was done. Story 5 On a class trip, I heard a girl talk badly about me to the other girls in my room, saying I was a retard and too dumb to stand up for myself. She said the only reason she didn't bully me out of the school was because she needed me to help her with my homework. Then my best friend stood up for me. She said that I wasn't dumb and just a bit shy, and then told her to step off. Well, isn't this just a delightful little story? Nothing like a little bit of good old-fashioned bullying to really spice up a class trip. So let me get this straight. Some girl decides to talk smack about you behind your back, calling you a retard and implying that you're too dumb to stand up. All in all, I'm thrilled to hear that you have someone in your life who's willing to stand up for you like that. And as for the mean girl, well, I'm sure she'll get her come up in some day. After all, karma's a real you-know-what. Story 6 When I was like 10 or 11, I visited my dad, and while we were watching a movie, I tried to fall asleep, and I proceeded to hear him boning his girlfriend on the bed I was trying to sleep on. When I woke up, all I saw was clothes on the floor. I don't know why I didn't just get up and leave, but at least I fell asleep before it really started. Story 7 when I was a wee tot, I pretended to be asleep in the family room so I wouldn't have to actually go to bed, and once my parents were distracted, I could keep watching TV. I then got to hear my dad proposition my mom for couch whoopee. It's been many years, so I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was something along the lines of hop on pop. Story 8. I wasn't pretending to be asleep per se, but I was well on my way. I was under anesthesia and was fading in and out. I remember closing my eyes to help move things along. I was in a lot of pain because my appendix ruptured. This happened years ago, so I can't remember all of the details, unfortunately. I remember being moved over to an operating table, and they told me to take my shirt off, I think. I heard someone go, what do you think would happen if I poke her belly button right now? I was an Audi prior to having an appendectomy. They went through my belly button, so that is no longer the case. Anyway, someone very quickly responded, Dude, that is not funny. Remember what happened the last time? It's possible I was starting to dream, but I remember it making me feel a mix of amusement and anxiety. Oh boy, this story just had me rolling with laughter. I mean, who wouldn't find a medical professional making jokes during surgery hilarious? It's just so comforting to know that the people responsible for cutting you open and fixing your insides have such a great sense of humor. Honestly, I don't know how I would have survived my surgery without these medical professionals cracking jokes left and right. It's not like I was already in a vulnerable state or anything. No, I needed someone to make light of the situation and poke fun at my body parts while I was on the brink of unconsciousness. In all seriousness, though, I'm glad everything turned out okay and that my belly button is no longer an Audi. But next time, maybe keep the jokes to a minimum, huh? Story 9. Found out my dad's best friend passed away. They've been friends since they were literally five years old, went to the same schools, stayed best friends for 50 years, when he became an alcoholic and cut off contact with everybody. My dad still reached out to him multiple times, even though he obviously wasn't ready. He eventually got off the drink, and they became really close again, and were calling each other every day. I woke up to the phone ringing, and my dad looking at it, and immediately saying to my mom, Oh God, I think he's passed. He knew that he only called when something bad was up, and he had been hospitalized multiple times because of his drinking. I remember saying on a post years ago that I dread to think of the day that his best friend passed away because I knew it was coming soon because of his past. My dad is old and is the type of guy who just wants a chat, and I know a lot of people he talks to don't want to do that. Anyway, I heard it all unfold and pretended to sleep because I just did not know what to say. I couldn't imagine losing a best friend for that long. 
I sat in my bed for hours thinking about it, but just laying still. I didn't fully process it until I went to work and I spent nearly two hours crying in the toilets. That was the only time I cried in my adult life. Oh, my heart. My condolences go out to you and your family during this difficult time. Losing a loved one is never easy, but losing a best friend of 50 years is truly heartbreaking. Your dad must be going through a range of emotions right now, from sadness to disbelief to perhaps even regret for not being able to do more to help his friend. I can understand why you felt at a loss for words when you overheard your dad receiving the news of his friend's passing. Sometimes, in moments of great sadness and shock, words fail us. But know that your presence and support mean a lot to your dad and your family during this time of grief. Please take care of yourself and your loved ones during this time. Story 10. Something like, She's too old for this. I'm not going to carry her up to bed anymore. And that was the last time I was magically transported from the living room couch to my bedroom. Story 11. I was a camp counselor. Two girls very much liked to make hot or not lists. One of them suggested a male counselor was hot, and the other said he was saying mean things about me behind my back, which made him not hot. Hurt to hear that from my campers, but glad they supported me. Story 12. My mom getting the crap beat out of her. Update. Thanks for everything, guys. Like I said in a reply, it was 30 years ago. He and my mom were married on and off until about 7 years ago when he put her in the hospital and I ended up breaking his nose and a rib. No idea where he is now, but she knows if she ever talks to him again or mentions him, she loses a son. Update 2. I noticed some people following me. You really don't want to do that. I'm what you call a very nice jerk. I do argue about stupid, meaningless stuff and have a very strong opinion against racism and fascists. I've only posted one original content here. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 13. My sister got drunk and I heard a loud thud and she blacked out. Two of her friends and my mom and dad were shouting at each other and they were saying to shut up because they didn't want to wake me up and they were all crying, thinking that she had passed away and I couldn't tell my sister I was happy she didn't pass away. Now, I appreciate seeing her every week. Story 14. That I was passing away with meningitis. But jokes on the doctors, I'm still kicking. Story 15. Roommate's boyfriend and his friend came into my room when they thought I was asleep. It was warm and I was sleeping naked with minimal blanket coverage. I froze and pretended to sleep. They proceeded to talk about my body and how it was anyone's type. Also, how easily it was to drug ladies these days. Oh, and also the friend talked about how easy it would be to steal and sell my boyfriend's boat motor that he had stored in the room. Yeah, so they were kicked out and friend became an ex-friend because she was angry I'd let my boyfriend kick them out. I commend you for staying calm and pretending to sleep in the face of such disrespectful behavior. It can be difficult to know how to react in those situations and it's understandable that you froze. However, you took action by reporting the incident and having them removed from your living space. It's disappointing that your roommate's friend became upset with you for standing up for yourself and enforcing boundaries. It's important to surround ourselves with people who respect and support us, and it's clear that her actions did not align with those values. Story 16. Old roommates planning to kick me out. Story 17. When I was around 8 years old, I was supposed to be asleep, but I snuck downstairs to get milk or something. I heard talking going on downstairs, so I stood still and listened. My mom was talking to my brother about how much of a problem I was and how she hated me. She always liked my brother more. I just silently crept back upstairs and cried myself to sleep. Good times. Story 18. My mom having an affair with her fiancé's best friend, who was married. In the same room that I was sleeping in. I was like 10 years old. Story 19. My family were staying at a friend's house and had to share a room. My dad comes to bed hammered and says to my mom something along the lines of, Does it impress you that I'm this drunk and can still perform? I actually wanted to pass away. Story 20. My mom and stepdad talking mad stuff about me. I was in high school and needed to start seeing the counselor for mental health issues. My parents were essentially making fun of me, saying that I wanted attention, and started mocking my voice, saying, No one understands me. I'm so mistreated. Story 21. My friends talking about going into my wallet later and stealing my money, and then leaving before I noticed. I kicked them out. 
Story 22. I wasn't pretending to be asleep so much as they assumed I was sleeping. My in-laws thought I was still napping after dropping my kid off at school, and they started to trash talk me. They said I was a terrible mom, I didn't care about my kids at all, and they better buy a cake, because I would rather sleep all day than make him a cake. It was his birthday, and my god, it was only 10 a.m. It doesn't take that long to make and frost a cake for him. Anyways, I cried in my room for two hours before they left to buy groceries. That is, drink themselves into a stupor before I got up and made the cake and birthday dinner my child asked for. I didn't tell my husband what they said until a week later because I didn't want to ruin his or my child's day. Oh my goodness, that is just awful. I can't imagine how hurtful and frustrating it must have been to hear your in-laws talking behind your back like that. It's one thing to have disagreements or differing opinions, but it's a whole other level of disrespect to make negative comments about someone's parenting skills. It's understandable that you needed some time to process your emotions after hearing their hurtful comments. It's not easy to brush off criticism or negativity, especially when it's directed at something as important as your parenting. Story 23 Parents talking about plans for when they were going to make love. Story 24 I was in trade school in a different city than my hometown, so I was staying at my in-law's home. My wife's dad was away for the weekend, and I noticed her mom was wearing fancy dresses. She's a very beautiful woman, often mistaken for my wife's sister. She also seemed extra giddy before she would go out for the evenings. On the evening my father-in-law got home, I was in my room studying when I heard him yell at the top of his lungs, So you slept with the guy? I can only assume she felt guilty and told him since it was soon after he got home. Anyways, he was yelling at her for most of the night, and I heard lots of crying from both of them. I heard some pretty terrible things. They're both very nice people, and it was sad to hear them on their worst night. They've stayed together, and it looks like they are fighting to make their marriage work. My father-in-law was very cold, distant, and angry for a couple of years, but they seem to be warm towards each other again. Also, the following morning, they apologized for all the noise they made, and I told them I was just listening to music. Well, 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 it sounds like you stumbled upon quite the scandalous situation there. I mean, who doesn't love a little bit of drama to spice up their trade school experience? I can only imagine how awkward and uncomfortable it must have been to hear all of that drama unfolding right outside your door. It's not every day that you get a front row seat to someone else's marital problems. In all seriousness, though, it's not easy to hear people you care about going through a difficult time. It's a testament to their resilience and commitment to each other that they were able to work through their issues and come out on the other side. Story 25. My mom and aunt talking, thinking 10-year-old me was asleep. Aunt. Little runs and goeses is so cute. Mom. No, he's not very good looking at all. Story 26. Before I got divorced, was laying in bed, 11 a.m. or so, on my day off, after a long string of, I think, 10 or so work days in a row, my ex, who refused to get a job, was in the next room playing a video game, and I heard him say, That lazy mother is still sleeping. Story 27. The person in the bunk under me beating his dong like it owed him money. Story 28. No wonder people at school think he's gay. My stepmom. Story 29. My dad and stepmom were having a foursome with a couple of their friends. We were at a summer house, and they did it in the living room. I felt so uncomfortable eating breakfast the next day. Story 30. Not me, but my wife heard her boyfriend sleeping with her best friend. This was obviously long before we met. Story 31. My sister's soon-to-be fiancé wanking while saying her name. Story 32. Probably the funniest was on a camping trip with the boys. I have sleep apnea and use a CPAP machine. I overheard a couple of my mates talking about smoking a joint and hotboxing me through the air intake of my CPAP machine. Story 33. My roommate and her friends with benefits having loud, dirty talk. I had just had my wisdom teeth out, and I think they assumed I was passed out on pain meds. Story 34. Well, my friends sucking each other's dongs, they were 16. Story 35. My mom's boyfriend sloppily trying to bone my mom all drunk whilst we were all sharing the same freaking hotel room. I was 13. Story 36. Freshman college roommate watching naughty movies on his laptop, wearing headphones, humping his mattress like there's no tomorrow. Story 37. Had a bunk bed in college, and one night my girlfriend and I woke up to my roommate banging some chick on the top bunk. My girlfriend asked me what we should do, and I just mumbled, just go back to sleep. 
because I figured saying something to them at that moment would make things much more awkward. He still doesn't know. Story 38. My grandparents won $10,000 at the casino, and they told all of their children, and presumably gave them some of that money, except my dad. My dad is a jerk, so I didn't tell him either. Story 39. We could do it. She wouldn't tell anyone if we took photos of her first. Story 40. Probably my dad's dementia screaming. Usually nothing is wrong, but he'll wake up at 4 or 5 in the morning to yell at God and grind his teeth. You never do get used to it. Story 41. My then-boyfriend opening up our bedroom door to show me off to his friends while I was sleeping. It was the middle of summer, so I was lying butt-naked on our bed. He thought I was asleep. Huge fight occurred the next morning, and we were not dating for long after that event. What the heck, man? I'm still ticked off about that. You knew I was naked. Story 42. My ex and his friend joking about how easy it'd be to abuse me while I was sleeping. Story 43. My older brother in the next room when he snuck a girl in. They were going at it for about a minute, and then I could hear him apologizing for about 20. May not be the worst ever, but it's definitely the funniest. Story 44. Parents discussing the gift that Santa had got me for Christmas. Story 45. I was doing an all-nighter with the boys, gaming of course. I fell asleep at some point playing Minecraft Creative and woke up to... How often do you guys pleasure yourselves? Story 46. Hmm, I was called crab meat by a girl. Story 47. Come on, he's asleep. Okay, fine, I'll do it. But how do I suck it? Like, just let it go in your mouth and stroke it with your tongue. Well, I'll try. Oh, yeah. Choking noises, coughing, screw you. Story 48. Roommate getting a bejesus. The worst part was when I heard him say, I'm gonna finish. Legit wanted to end my life. Story 49. My dad explaining how I was an accident. Story 50. My roommate's one-night stand dismount because his dong was hitting her bladder, and she waddled off for a pee before getting back on top. Story 51. When I was a kid, I used to be scared of monsters or something creeping up on me in my sleep, so I would always ask my dad to check on me before he went to bed. It made me feel more comfortable. One night, I was still awake when I heard him coming up the stairs, and I wasn't supposed to be awake and knew I would get in trouble if he saw me, so I pretended to be asleep. He came into my room and just kind of stared at me for a few seconds, then came up close to my bed, lifted the blanket up, farted under it, turned around, and left. It's been at least 15 years, and I remember that night vividly. He vehemently denies it to this day, but I know what happened. Story 52 while in kindergarten, I heard the teacher talking on her phone and saying that she doesn't feel comfortable having an Indian kid in her class. At the time, I didn't understand why she hated me, but now I know. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.